Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and on this episode of The Complete Picture, we're going to take a look at five really cool things that you can do with layer groups. I find that most people think that layer groups are just for organizing their layers, but they can actually make layers behave differently depending on what you do to them. So we're going to take a look at five different effects. So the first one, you can see here that I just have four shapes, and these shapes are overlapping a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put them in a group. So they're all selected on my Layers panel. So in order to put them in a group, all I'm going to do is use Command-G or Control-G in order to group those together. Now, I also want to make a duplicate of this group because I want to show you two different ways to apply these blend modes. So I'm going to use Command or Control-J in order to duplicate the group here. And we'll just move this group. Of course, one of the nice things is because these four layers are in this group, if I have the Move tool and I simply click and drag, all of the layers within that group move together. So you don't actually have to select each layer individually. I can just select the group and then all the layers within that group will move. All right, let's go back down to Group 1 though. This is the group that is on the left-hand side. And what I want to do is I want to apply the Multiply Blend Mode to all of these different shapes. So I'll select them all. And in Photoshop CS6, you can select more than one layer and then change the blend mode for all of those layers at one time. And you can see that where these different snowflakes overlap, we're getting a blending between them. In fact, if I use the options here to go ahead and align these on top of each other, both horizontally and vertically, we get a really cool effect here where all of these snowflakes are blending together. Now, I want to show you the difference between adding the blend mode to the individual layers and to the layer group. So let's jump up to the group, and instead of selecting the individual layers, I'll just select the group and change the blend mode here to multiply. And we're not seeing the same results. What happens when you apply a blend mode to a group is it's as if, no, it doesn't really happen, but it's as if each of the layers in the group has been merged together, and then the blend mode is applied at the end of that. So we can go ahead and stack these on top of each other as well by just clicking on the two icons here. You can see that there's no blending between the different shapes. The only thing that's being blended is the group as a whole it's being multiplied with the background layer so we see the texture there. So if I put this back to normal, we wouldn't see the texture through those shapes. All right, so that's one thing that you can do with layer groups. Let's take a look at how you can apply styles on a per layer basis or on a layer group. Again, I've just got three shapes here. I'll use Command G in order to group those, and then Command or Control J in order to make a copy and we'll use our Move tool and just move down our copy of the circles. All right, so for Group 1 here, the group on the top, I'm going to select the first shape, and then using the Effects icon here at the bottom of my Layers panel, I'm just going to add a simple drop shadow. And if we move the layer style out of the way here, you can see that I've added the drop shadow here, and we can move that around, and I'll just increase the size a little bit. All right, we'll click OK. And what I want to do is I want to copy and paste that drop shadow to each of my other layers. So probably the easiest way is I can right mouse click, say copy the layer style, select the other two shape layers, and then go ahead and paste this layer style. And by adding the drop shadow to each shape individually, you can see, for example, that the drop shadow from this first shape here on the top is actually cast down onto the shape underneath it. So it looks like the top circle is actually above the circle below it. Now, you might be after a different effect. What you might want is you might want all of those circles to cast a single shadow. So in order to do that, we'll turn on our second group here, and something new to Photoshop CS6 is the ability to add a drop shadow to a group. So the easiest way to do this, because that drop shadow is already copied, is I can right mouse click and then just choose Paste Layer Style. And now you can see, very similar to applying a blend mode, when you apply a style to a group as opposed to the individual layers in that group, 
the group pretends, or all the layers within that group pretend as if they're flattened, and then the style gets applied after that. So you don't see the shadows casting on one ring to another. Instead, all the rings are as if they're being merged, and then the shadow is cast below those. All right, so this might come in really handy. I just wanted to show you a little bit more of a real world example here. I have all of this clothing here in a single group. So again, if I wanted to add a drop shadow, I can right mouse click because I still have it copied to the clipboard. I can paste that layer style, and you can see how easy it is to add a drop shadow to all of the clothing. Of course, it's going to be uniform, and if I would need to make a change to it, all I need to do is double click where it says drop shadow, and then we could change the size or we could change the position of that drop shadow. Okay, moving on, another very cool effect that you can get by using layer groups is the ability to restrict how the layers interact within the group versus the rest of the layers in the document. So here you can see that I've got these three layers. There's a hat layer, we've got the man, and then the collar, and then the hole down here is separate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the collar, the man, and the hat, those three layers, I'm going to put them in a group by using Command or Control G. And now what I want to do is I want to turn everything in that group to black and white. But you notice that if I add a black and white adjustment layer here and it's outside the group, then of course everything below that black and white adjustment layer will be viewed here in black and white. So if I put the black and white adjustment layer, if I drag it down into the group, well, we still get that same effect because the black and white adjustment layer is still going to be applied to everything below it. But we can restrict that by clicking on the group here and changing the blend mode. So groups have a special unique blend mode called pass through, which allows things like an adjustment layer to pass through the bottom of that group. If we change this to normal, now you can see the black and white adjustment layer is only affecting the layers within the group. It is not affecting the color in the background here. So that's another great reason to use groups is to control the interaction of certain adjustment layers or certain clipping groups within your entire document. So another really great effect that you can get when you're using layer groups is the ability to actually clip something like a texture or another color to a group. Now again, this is a new feature in Photoshop CS6, but if you look at the Layers panel, I've got a layer here that we can make visible. This is my texture layer, and I just want to add a texture on top of all of the layers in my group without it applying to the background layer, this layer 2 here. So in order to do that, I'll just change the blend mode here to overlay or soft light so that it just looks like the texture is falling on top. But again, we can see there's texture in the background. It's also a little bit too harsh, so let's take down the opacity of that texture. And then to restrict the texture so that it's only applied on top of the photographs that are in the group, all I need to do is create what's called a clipping mask. Easiest way is to go here under Layer and then create Clipping Mask or use the keyboard shortcut Command Shift G or Control Shift G on Windows. There is another way to do that if you want a shortcut here on the Layers panel. You can hold down the Option and the Alt key and position your cursor right between the group and the layer and just click and that will automatically create a clipping group for you. So another way that you can use layer groups in order to hide or show effects. And finally, we'll use this last image here. You can see that I've got two layers of the clouds and these clouds are down here in this water area. Now, I want to add a mask to mask both of those layers at one time. So I'll select both of the layers and then use Command or Control G to group those. And while I've got the group selected, we'll click on the mask icon in order to add a layer mask. Then I can just tap G for my gradient tool. I'll get my linear gradient. And because I'm dragging from black to white, black being my foreground, white being my background, Black hides and white reveals, so I'll click and drag up, and I can hold down the Shift key here in order to create a straight line. And you can see now that this mask that's been applied to the group is masking all of the contents of that group. So it's a great way, 
especially if you've got some layers that already have masks on them and you want to then add to that mask but you're not really sure, this is a great way. Just put the layer or layers into a group and add a secondary layer mask on that group. It's a really flexible way, especially if you just want to kind of maybe try something but you don't want to destroy your original mask. Great, well there's five cool things that you can do with layer groups in Photoshop CS6. I'm Julianne Cost, thanks for watching. Thank you.